Hello everyone. Uh, today uh, I want to show something that you can do with the leaves of the prickly pear because we are in season. I mean, this recipe you can almost do it all year round. What we are in, se in season of the fruits, and so I'm just using it for more things. But the leaves, this recipe I'm going to share today. You can do it almost all year round because uh, it's better if you use young leaves. They'll have uh, less fibers and then less thorns. But uh, you can use also uh, all the leaves. You can use all the leaves, and and when you get these little fibers here, they look like strings, like like cords. If you, if you see there is too many. You just uh, don't use it anymore. This normally is at the end of the leaf. Yeah, this I, I I kept this kind of this piece of leaf for you to see. We've been taking out the the thorns and these pieces, these little pieces, because they have too many fibers already. We won't use them. If it was a, a, an older leaf, maybe we wouldn't use this part. But from this one, it's still good. Okay, so I'm gonna, I cut it already in chunks like this. You don't need to peel it, to peel it. Actually, there's a lot of uh, nutrition in the, in the skin. This kind of uh, chunks. And I'm gonna put it there, because I'm gonna mix it there. And uh, I put, uh, I put, uh, at the most, I put 3% of salt, but I can put 2% of salt and 1% of spices, for example. Why 3% of salt? Because we know that the best microbiology uh, comes with 3% salt. So in this uh, mixture, for you to know, I, there is 1800 grams of, uh, of prickly pear leaf, I put three, 36 grams of salt, 18 grams of spices. What, uh, spices, you can use whatever spices you like more. I use paprika and I use curry powder. And I use uh, salt, of course. So I'm just gonna finish cutting this. And I put it all there, together. And uh, this... Uh, I've said in other posts and other videos that the, the prickly pear leaf is very nutritious for us. It's got many vitamins, amino acids, and, and uh, this mucus that it's got, that for some people is a bit unpleasant, <laughs> is uh, actually very good uh, medicine for our digestive system and also is quite nutritious. Here it's starting to become hard. So this, this last part of the leaf, I'm not going to use it. So I use this, a little bit more. And everything, all the leaves and the salt and the spices are already here. And I'm going to mix it because I want to, to get liquid. I, you see how the liquid starts to come out? because of the salt and I, I want the more as more liquid as possible yeah something like that you can crush it a little bit with your fingers so it uh, becomes more juicy We need uh, as much liquid as possible, but liquid from the own, from the from the plant. Actually, this is the same recipe as chukrut, sauerkraut, made with cabbage. I just mm, change the ingredient of the cabbage for prickly pear leaf. But you could mixture 
cabbage, uh, prickly pear leaves, some beetroot, some, this would be more like a kimchi or, or fermented salad. But this one I, I want to do it for you to see uh, only with, with prickly pear, because it is possible, it's a great resource, this plant, very nutritious, very tasty, very nice. This chukrut, this sauerkraut, I really like eating it. It's, uh, it's not too salty, it's not, uh, and it's a very nice flavor and texture, and it goes well with any dish almost <laughs> to, to give flavor. Yeah, we're already getting quite a lot of juice. That might be about enough. I mean, we can do more if we want. It's always good if you have a big container to make the mixture, so you can move it around and, and you don't throw it out of the container. This will be more or less enough. You see, this is quite sticky, yeah, because it's got mucus, the same as aloe vera and other cactus and succulent plants. But this mucus is very good for us. So I'm just gonna wash a little bit. And now we'll put it in, uh, in these jars, yeah, I show you. I want to put it with some liquid. You have to put it with liquid because uh, the liquid is gonna preserve everything and it's gonna make the fermentation happening. Yeah? And if you have another recipe of sauerkraut, you just do, do your recipe if you want and you can taste and you can compare and the ones you like the best the most you that's the one you do it in here you fill it up not to the end but almost and uh, it has to be quite full and it has to be in the liquid It has to be in the liquid, submerged in the liquid, immersed. So you close it, you close it, and you leave it like this for uh, five, six days. But you leave it like this for five or six days. But uh, every day you open it you'll hear the sound of the of the gas like psh, yeah and uh, you move it a little bit to for so the solids that are out of the liquid get inside so we don't get any yeast or any any other bacteria that we don't know that we don't want i mean so just a little bit every day and you close it again. In five, six days, ten days, if it's colder, the weather, it depends on how, how warm is the place where you're doing it. But uh, uh, maybe in cold climates, I mean, you don't have these plants in, in cold climates, but if it's winter, uh, you maybe leave it a, a little bit longer. You just taste it. You just taste it and when it's, got, it's not too strong, but it's already fermented, you put it in the fridge, yeah? You put it in the fridge and in the fridge it can last for very long, for months, actually. But because we have this resource all, all year round, we don't need to make uh, such a huge quantity. We can make uh, small quantities and, and be taking when, the, when it's not very acidic because it's nicer, the, the flavor. 
So just taste and try and do your recipes of sauerkraut and uh, I encourage you to, to use prickly pear leaf. It's a very nutritious plant and very good for us. So I hope you enjoy and see you soon in next videos. Ciao, ciao.